Hi all, welcome to the first lecture of the course. I'll be introducing you to the language of statistics. Just a note, these are pro probably the most important tools in this course. Essentially, these are your lectures. I have written these to be as clear as possible and to provide you tools, all the tools you'll need to solve the problems and the homework questions. Um, and as always, please feel free to ask me any questions you have. Okay, so what is statistics? Statistics involves anything from the collection of data, designing, experiments, all the way to how you interpret the data. The population is really what we are after in the statistics. We want to know something about a population. A population could be people, animals, objects, events, you name it. The word all in this definition is the most important word. Here are some examples. Um, all blades of crabgrass in Mecklenburg County, every cash transaction at Harris Teeter in a given week, all students in an online course at Queen's University. Sorry. Okay. So what happens though is that a lot of times populations are too large so we can't actually collect all the data. For instance, if we're looking at um, the example of all blades of crabgrass in Mecklenburg County, um, there's no way to collect data in, on all of those. So what we have to do is take a sample of this. In other words, just a subset of the population. Subset is the most, word, most important word. Ideally, if it's a good sample, that would give us uh, some information about the population. So that actually brings us to parameters and statistics. A parameter is a numeric characteristics um, such as a mean about a population. So it's the population mean. Whereas a statistic is similar, but it is the, about a sample. It's about a sample. I'm just emphasizing this. Um, sometimes it is helpful when looking at a sample to try and figure out what the population is. A lot of times you'll be reading a journal article and they won't tell you what actually the population is. Um, it's good to know what what group you are trying to generalize to and whether you are taking a good sample and we'll we'll like get more into this um, as the semester goes on but I did want to mention this so let's look at an example now um, suppose we are reading a journal article and a researcher um, that he is taking says that he's taking a sample of 210th graders from a local high school and he wants to know whether there is a relationship between the amount of television students watch and their SAT scores. Please take a minute and pause the video and think about what population that might be he, sampling, he wants to sample. For this example I said the population is all 10th graders um, but it is actually possible that there are other answers that are acceptable for this um, question he's only selecting 10th graders from this high school but I think he's really wanting to look at something broader than this um, than high schoolers. Sometimes researchers tend to uh, do the best they can to pick a representative sample but if doing a survey like this it's not always um, easy to get a sample from every high school in the United States if that's what your population is. Um, some other possible solutions could have been all 10th graders in the United States maybe maybe all 10th graders in a specific state, etc. Um, it's just not, there's not just one possible solution for this. Okay, let's try a, um, a second example. Okay, now we are taking a sample of 30 breakfast cereals and measuring the sugar content, trying to determine um, whether targeted children cereals have higher amounts of sugars than cereals that are not targeted ch to children. And take another minute and try to figure out if you can um, see what the population could be for this one. For this example, um, I think it's pretty more much straightforward compared to the last one. There's really, I think, only one possible solution. Uh, the population I said is all breakfast cereals. So let's try one more example. The third example. Um, Suppose you find a coin and want to know if it's a fair coin. In other words, whether you flip it, does it land on heads half the time, or 
um, tail and tails half the other time. So a person who finds a coin flips to see if the uh, proportion of heads is about one half. Take a minute, see if you can figure out what this population is. This population is a little different because this is a theoretical population, all possible flips of the coin. So you could not possibly collect um, data on all possible flips of the coin. No matter how much time you have, there's not, it's not possible to actually collect all, all the time. So because this is a theoretical um, population, but this is a population. So the population is all possible flips of the coin. Okay, so back to parameters and statistics. Statistics estimate parameters. So we said earlier that um, statistics are characteristics of the sample, while parameters are characteristics of the population. And we see these in pairs. For example, this X bar, which is the symbol for the mean of a sample, and this mu, this is the symbol for population mean. Um, the, this is a statistic parameter pair, uh, where we have X bar estimated, estimated the parameter mu. And just a note, some of these symbols, especially these two, um, come up a lot in the course. So I'd advise you to maybe make a list of all the symbols or put them on note cards and study them just as a reference. And um, it'll be easier not to just keep flipping back to lectures and such uh, when, test and, um, when test and homework come about. So let's look at an example. Suppose we take a sample of 250 adult hammerhead sharks and measure them, and we want to estimate the average length of all hammerhead sharks in the Atlantic Ocean. So we sample 250, and if we find the average in the sample is 12 feet, that is X bar, the sample mean, um, that's our best guess for the population mean mu. So our estimate for the population mean would be 12. And now that brings us to the definition of inferential statistics. That's the branch of statistics devoted to using information in a sample to make generalizations or inferences to the population. We just made an inference with the hammerhead example when we said the sample mean is 12. So we think the population mean is roughly 12. So now let's look at uh, an outline of this course. There's four units. We'll look at the probability um, uh, first this week and we'll focus on the normal distribution. There's a lot more that we could do for probability and um, your book touches based on it but I try to keep it a, a little bit at the minimum for this course so we have enough tools to um, understand sampling and to do some calculations that come up later in this course. The next unit will be descriptive statistics. We get into using charts and graphs, calculating numeric summary, measures to try and characterize a sample. After this unit, um, your midterm will, you'll have your midterm. Um, and then the third unit we'll look at is samples that have one variable and then infer it to the population. So we'll be, we will be doing things like if the sample mean is 18, um, can we conclude that the population mean is less than 20? And then finally, the last unit we'll go over is how sample, uh, or two samples, um, or two variables, which is where we look at comparing two means or looking at the relationship between two variables. Since these uh, lectures have to be short, I only have a time frame to um, screen these, uh, I'm going to make another video, so stay tuned for the next video.